Hello, everybody, <clears throat> and welcome to uh, Nothing with Chloe in the Afternoon. Um, so I don't have, I even finished all my snacks. I had some wonderful maple cookies a couple minutes ago, and uh, I don't have my wonderful lamp in front of me to illuminate my face, so <clears throat> I'm in the dark, and I need to refresh my phone so that I can try and make sure that the audio is working which it is working that is great to see and so we can get started um, so Chloe here co-founder of the Marma J Foundation arguably here mostly though on behalf of the Marma J Research DAO and trying to continue you know contributing over time to the uncloak knowledge graph and so <clears throat> for this contribution generally i am participating and helping to run and lead the study group that is currently going on like every friday is a lecture each week there's a new topic uh closely following the you know crypto engineering uh textbook but there's also some extra readings assigned with the course and so, oh, looks like I am having some potential issues with my display. So I'm just going to change it. And it looks like I'm still getting issues. So I'm going to try one more thing. That's weird. Is that working now? I feel like I'm still getting a really buggy screen. Mm, is it because of this? And <laughs> display capture. Let's put up. It's having a tough time. So basically. Do whoa, there we go. <laughs> it's a bit big, but um, I should be able to pick a different one that's a bit uh, it's a bit smaller. Um, which one's a good size? Usually, Discord's actually a pretty good one. Because it covers the entire screen. Whoops. And that's breaking things. So, one more time. Let's see if we can use Discord as an example. Okay. Good enough. I think it does have to be. Whoops. Just setting my screen up a little better, hopefully. Oh. Sad times. I feel like we're getting more issues than we need to have currently. And so I'm just going to get started, to be fair. Just trying to make sure it's not completely going to cause someone OCD or something breakdown um, I did put that a bit too high and that should be good enough I don't know why this is 
I'm going to have to set this up again when I'm done. But for now, this is good enough. Hopefully everyone can see the paper on the left-hand side, my notes on the right-hand side, and I'll just continue um, for now. It's not a perfect screen. Um, so typically, I try my best to... This paper looks, looks like it's well, like... Uh, it'll work well with the... Oh, no. I clicked the button again. Lord, help me. Stop. So... I have Samantha doing the voice. have the pitch and the speed. So... I should... I think I already messed it up. <laughs> um, yes, that needs to go out. That's good enough. So, looks like we should at least be able to do one side at a time. Okay. Actually, sure. Let's try doing the whole page and see if it works. For centuries, cryptography has been a valuable asset of the military and diplomatic communities. Indeed, it is so valuable that its practice has usually been shrouded in secrecy and mystery. The growing commercial need for cryptographic systems, however, requires an expansion of public knowledge in this area. In response to this need, IBM instituted Eris Art Program in the late 1960s to develop high-grade crypto systems for use in its product line. It successfully introduced a cache dispensing terminal facet in this research, and applications to terminals, tape and disk drives, etc. appear in it. Because these applications would benefit from a well-defined standard or set of standards, the National Bureau of Standards NBS has adopted a data encryption standard 2 designed by IBM to help preserve competition. IBM will not receive royalties on most devices which comply with the standard unfortunately. The proposed standard is too weak for some applications and should be modified. We have attempted to make NBS aware of this problem. Three feet four butter efforts thus far have been apparently unsuccessful. NBS has raised a number of objections to the technical validity of our position. This paper is intended to carefully set down our reasoning so that the technical community can form its own opinion. The following section provides the basic argument concerning the standard's inadequate level of security. It shows that, using the simplest of cryptanalytic attacks, a $20 million machine can be built to break the proper set standard in about 12 hours of computation time. The equivalent cost per solution is only $5,000, obtained by depreciating the machine over five years. Thus, the proposed standard's level of security against this attack is high today but not excellent, since major intelligence agencies possess the financial resources and the interest to build such a machine more seriously. In about 10 years' time, the rapid lit increasing cost of computation will bring the machiniscus down to the $200,000 range, and the cost per 74 solution down to the $50 range. The standard will then almost totally insecure for this reason the standard may have to be reclassed in as few as 5 years just as it is coming into its produce. The cost, inconvenience, and loss of comfortability associated with this planned obsolescence can be avoided by making minor modifications to test standard which incur essentially no additional cost while NBS disputes our claims. It has indicated that changing technology will probably cause the standard to be revised in 5 or 10 years. Equipment which NACAS use of the standard should be designed to minimize the cost of substituting a new standard. There is also the danger that encrypted messages which are too costly to break now will be stored and broken in a few years at a much lower cost. While most confidentiality data have short privacy time constants, today's medical records, income tax returns, census data, etc. Should still private 10 years from now. The basic argument in this section we developed the basic argument concerning standards level of security. The following two sections are primarily a justification for the assumptions of this basic argument. The proposed standard transforms a block of 64 plain text, unenciphered, bits, denoted P, into a block of 64 ciphered X bit C. This transformation is governed by a 56 bit key and is invertible so that C equals SK, P, P equals SKS, C, where SK is the enciphering transformation when key is used. There are 256 keys we will consider a known plaintext cryptanalytic attic in which the cryptanalyst has several corresponding plaintext ciphered X blocks, all encrypted in the same key on the basis of these he tries to determine the key for use in reading later cryptograms for which he does not computer. Okay, so um, basically it seems like there's a standard that got developed uh, by IBM, 1960s. Uh, and basically they're saying, hey, uh, this is not very secure because it's too weak. We gotta modify it. Uh, but they're saying that they don't actually, they don't believe us. But we're saying, hey, it would cost 20 millions to break this now, and 12 hours, and $5,000 per solution to crack it. But in 10 years, you could probably build a computer for 200 grand and $50 per solution to crack it. So uh, I think that's pretty interesting, just showing like how, you know, over time these solutions just get more uh, cheaper, less expensive. Um, and they got to maybe replace the standard in like as few as five years, right? And just as people start using it, it seems like that's probably not realistic. And then it tries going into the actual math uh, and like how the standard actually works, which is very helpful. So 
So the proposed standard transforms a block of 64 plain text, so 64 bit block of plain text denoted P into a block of 64 bit ciphertext and a C. Okay, that's straightforward enough. This transformation is governed by a 56 bit key and is invertible. So it's an invertible function. Makes sense. The ciphertext is S, the key on the plain text. Okay, it tells you where SK is the enciphering transformation when the K is used. Okay, just how that's like the function to use. Uh, so, like, normally, I guess for me, I would, you know, these days I would see like uh, the ciphertext would be. Um, Decrypting using the key on the plain text. Wait, no, encrypting. Sorry, <laughs> encrypting the plain text, and the plain text would be sorry decrypting. Uh, well, I guess no, because that's that's why they use it. It's just invertible. They're just trying to say it's doesn't. There's using some function. It's invertible, and uh, if you use the key here, it'll give you plain text. And if you just invert the function here, you, the same text, you get the plain text back. Cool. So. This is all actually quite straightforward. And I think I like having the definition here. Again, I'm trying to write these uh, notes as if, you know, if I was gonna write an article on this um, article or paper, like how would I get have enough notes to get started? Also, of course, if I go try and like remember what was written about and said, I wanna be able to be like, what were the most important parts that I wanted to take out of it? So, um, I guess being able to model how long it would take for um, a you know a, a crypto algorithm or a product to be obsolete based on the crypto analysis would be really interesting. Um, I definitely will put that there, and I will do that. And you know what, y'all can just whoops get that. Not mean. Oh no. Oh no. No tags yet. Tags are confusing. I thought I would like tags more than I did when I was doing like overview videos for Obsidian, but I don't like tabs that much, tags that much. Um. Oh, that is definitely going to the bottom. That is. I don't know why that's an S. That should be a one. That needs to go there. Mm -mm -mm. That looks all right, I think. Oh, that looks ugly. Um, S to the... Oh, the whole thing needs to be... I wonder if I can just do it like this. I'm not, I haven't thought it through enough to... to... Nope, it doesn't like me. Mm, it looks all right. It just doesn't look perfect. Cause it looks like S minus one. Actually, it looks fine. Um, and then you know where S K is this bad boy. This chair is not that comfortable. I'm gonna move it a bit closer, but that's a lot better actually. Um, why am I always using the wrong one? Key. SK. Where? I'm like a little hyper right now. I need to go back through all of these notes. Mm 
fun un and ciphered what pro standard unenciphered interesting I've not used that word before interesting uh, a 56 bit key invertible so that where SK I guess I should just do that one too is the enciphering transformation when it K is used there 200 to exhibit 56 why are you doing this to me okay we will consider the known plain text can I talk in with okay so this is kind of like trying to set up the attack now and how it works this should probably be laid out written down so it's a known plain text attack so it's just by knowing the plain text that are being put in and the cryptanalyst has several corresponding plain text cipher text blocks so I guess you can see the cipher text, but you're not choosing this. Yeah, anyways. All encrypted to the same key. So you're using the same key many times. The attacker's chung plain text model. No. We will consider known plain text attack in which the cryptanalyst there was corresponding plain text blocks, all encrypted to the same key. Okay. On the basis of this, he tries to determine the key for use in reading later cryptograms. So you want to find the key. Like find, find K. Simple enough. I don't need to have a whole line for that. And next page. Oh, I guess I should probably say like, like this is a new title to be fair. Oh, fine. I'm not sure this is like, this still might be introduction, but anyway. Know the plain text, or he may use the key to inject properly enciphered messages of his choosing into the system to foil its authentication aspects. The known plain text attack is more formidable than the ciphernext only six attack familiar to enthusiasts of puzzle ciphers, in which the cryptanalyst has intercepted a quantity of ciphernext and has only partial knowledge of the structure of the plain text. E.g., it is in English, so he occurs 13% of the time. E.T.C. We consider the known plain text attack for several reasons. One, most successful professional cryptanalysis is facet and variations of the known plain text attack. Is the ally in a commercial system? It would be impractical to require that old plain text be kept secret or paraphrased if declassified, e.g. Time press releases point two. A later section indicates how the attack can often successfully modify to a ciphernext only attack. Three, MBS has agreed that the system should be secure against a known plain text attack. Seven, the attack described in this paper is based on brute force, but it would be successful. Let P and C denote the known plain text ciphernext pair related by the unknown key K to cipher C under each of the 256 keys until one is found which yields the known plain text P with minor exceptions. Discuss later. This key equals K such a search of the key space might seem infeasible because there are 256 10 feet 7 keys. So even if one key cold tried each microsecond, it would take 10 1 seconds, or about 106 days, to do an exhaustive search. A million devices searching in parallel, however, would take on my own day for an exhaustive search and one half day for beverage search, since the solution is found after trying on half the keys on the average. Because the standard was chosen so that it could be implemented on a single LSI chip, a million-fold parallel processor with 106 ICs is conceivable, although it certainly requires further justification on technical and economic grounds continuing to use order of magnitude estimates. In million quantities, the chips could be bought for about $10 each, allowing a factor of two for design, control hardware, power supplies, PC boards, racks, etc. results in a $20 million machine. Depreciating this cost over five years yields a daily operating cost of $10,000, which translates into an average cost of $5,000 per solution since the cryptanalysis yields the key in use. All material and in that key is compromised. 
If, for example, an organization's personnel records are all enciphered in the same key, the cost per record is much smaller than dollar sign five thousand. It should be re-emphasized that the above estimate was only accurate to order of magnitude, and we would not be surprised if today it would cost five million dollars to fifty dollars million to build a machine. However, as discussed later, this machine will benefit fully from the decreasing cost of hardware and computation, which has fallen about an order of magnitude every five years since the 1940s. Thus, even a factor of ten error would be erased in fifty years. The remaining sections indicate, though, that even a more accurate estimate is still in the twenty million dollars range. The probable error in this estimate is about a factor of two. The decreasing cost of computation has an even more serious effect. In 10 years, this $20 million machine will be a $200,000 machine in a half day's time will cost only $50. Although design costs may double at these figures, both the initial investment and the cost per solution will then be much too small to offer an inequality level of security. MBS has acknowledged that changes in standard are planned to meet advances in technology. Since the standard will be included in terminals, disk drives, tape units, etc. in hardware form, modifying the equipment to accept a new standard will be reliably expensive. If design constraints permit and physical security is adequate, using a plug-in module would minimize the change over cost. The revised standard will probably have a larger key, and buffers should be designed accordingly. Changing the standard will diminish its usefulness in fostering compatibility and interconnection. While the new standard will probably be upward compatible, there is the problem of reading new data with an old terminal and of distinguishing old from new data. This planned obsolescence is unwarranted, and it is easily remedied by increasing the key length from 56 bits to 128 or 256 bits. Use of the 128-bit key would increase an estimated cost for a brute force search from $5,000 to $2 x $1,025, and no foreseeable technological advances will allow this to be brought into a reasonable range indeed. Quantum mechanical and thermodynamic 89 com. Sidrations rule out exhaustive searches on keys of several hundred bits. It is important to note that while too small a key guarantees insecurity, a large key does not necessarily guarantee a high level of security. There may be shortcuts which allow successful grid analysis in much less time than is required by exhaustive search. For example, a monoalphabetic substitution cipher has 26 4 x 1,026 keys, yet it is quickly solved by hand from frequency counts on letters, pairs of letters, etc. Similarly, even a 128-bit version of the standard may succumb. Several other studies of the standard have been performed. NBS held a workshop zero in August 1976, which addressed the possibility of exhaustive search. Its conclusion, in complete disagreement with this paper, was that current technology would not support a machine of the type proposed herein. Rather, at the earliest, it will be 1990 before such a machine could be built. IBM performed a separate study which concluded that it could deliver such a machine by 1981 at a price of dollar sign 200 million. This is within an order of magnitude of our dollar sign 20 million cost estimate, and is even closer when the difference between manufacturing cost and price is considered. IBM has since disavowed the conclusions of this study and has taken the position that the conclusions of the MBS workshop should be accepted. We hope that this paper will clarify our reasons for adhering to our position. The authors, with several others, conducted a short, one line study which looked for structure and potential weaknesses in the standard. A symmetry under complementation was found, which allows a 50% savings in search effort under a chosen plain text attack. Potential weaknesses were also found, and methods for renovating them were suggested. This study suffered because the government has asked IBM to keep secret the structures designed into the memory tables used by the data encryption standard, DES. We think it is unreasonable for a public security standard to have secret structures because, if someone involved in the design of the standard were to turn against it, he would be in a much better position to break it. For this reason, it is a well-established principle that the security of the crypto system should not depend on secret design principles. We encourage MBS to heed this principle and to press for the public disclosure of all structures and design principles used in the standard. Both IBM and NSA have performed evaluations of the security level offered by the standard. We also encourage MBS to seek the public release of these studies to help. Okay, wow. A lot of stuff said here, kind of repeating the info from previously, but I wanted to get this information. Basically saying, increase the key length. Like, what are you guys doing? I'm gonna stick the whole thing down. Okay, so basically they're saying this is one way just to completely solve it. Like, so what are you doing? Because this doesn't make sense. To the power of you could just make the keys longer. And basically seeing like IBM's effing with us and lying. Why are you always lying? Increase. Wow, so they wrote the paper to F with IBM. I love it. I want to be that badass one day. When I grow up, I want to write papers. I want to. I don't know. I think these days the same thing is like writing code. Just write code, publish it. Forget what anyone else says. Just just. Pr
improve yourself with code. So, which is why I'm trying to learn to code, even though I'm not not the best, not the best at it. Uh, I should probably just uh, add the dictionary for Diffy. Um, I'm not taking everything down. I'm just trying to get the gist. Um, so another just kind of you know say hey, just because you make the keys bigger doesn't mean it'll be you know stronger. You can take shortcuts and you can mess up. So basically saying because you can mess up and then IBM's a liar, um, which is fine. Yeah, which is fine. It doesn't matter to me. But basically saying. Here, uh, the government asked IBM to keep secret the structures designed into the memory tables used in DES. Oh, it's for, for DES. Now I'm understanding this so much. So I think this just in general, the government's being shady and the authors of the short woman study was an instruction of weakness in the standard. A symmetry in the was a symmetry was found that allows fifty percent in search effort. But then we should were also found and method through the recession. And so they're just saying like all this man. Uh, why didn't this one just stay? Why are you being a uh, but? Why is it being a but? There's like an extra space here. No need. No need. No need for the extra space. Is there extra space on all of them? I don't think so. I don't know. Whatever. Should be fine. Good enough. Um, and potential under savings and memory standard security standard. There's this so you suffer because it's unreasonable for a public execution attacks to be structures. Yeah, I don't think we need that written down, it's obvious. Sorry. Okay. Both IBM and NSA have performed evaluations. We encourage NBS to see public release of these studies. They're saying there are studies that haven't been publicly released. Um, remove the doubts that you could actually do this. These people have also evaluated it. They found it wanting and make a number of suggestions for improving it, including enlarging the key size. So same thing we already talked about. So let's... I love this. Me, me, Montreal. So cool. Um, yeah, let's go through. Objections to the basic argument when we presented NBS with the basic argument off preceding section. It responded three with a number of objections which culminate in the conclusion that it won't take 91 years, not one day, to do an exhaustive search. More recently, Dr. Ruth Davis of NBS used a 2000 GR estimate for NBS bases this estimate on the assumption top. At most, 1000 parallel search devices can be used and at 40 a sec is the fastest that a key can be tried. These assumptions increase the search time by factors of 1040, respectively, for an overall increase to 40,000 days, which is approximately 91 years. This section discusses eight objections which are claimed by NBS to invalidate our argument. Design and control costs objection. The design and control costs overshadow the CPU hardware costs in a parallel processor. These costs grow much faster than linearly in the degree of parallelism. This is true for a parallel processor such as the Iliac I where the processors must interact. However, the architecture we envision, discussed in the next section, is more closely related to a large semiconductor memory than to a parallel processor. The repetitive structure, low I.O. volume, and lack of component interaction broadly simplify the design, including automatic fault diagnosis. Our conclusion is that, today, design and control costs will net greatly add to the total cost. 
FTB F objection. The mean time between failures in a million component system would be much less than one day. The machine would hardly ever complete an error free SAR. LSIICs are typically specified to have a failure rate of 0.05% per 1000 hours, but frequently have actual failure rates of 1% per 1000 hours. Using the conservative 1% per 1000 hours figure, a machine with 1 million devices has an MTB F of 0.1 hour or 6 minutes. By cooling the machine room, it should be possible to obtain 0.05% per 1000 hour failure rate, which would correspond to a 2 hour MTBF. These MTBFs do not present a problem because, as detailed in the following section, the machine would be built in 64 racks, each with about 16,000 components. Each rack would be capable of detecting its own chip failures and of signaling a mini computer controller to switch over to a spare rack while the fault was being repaired. Repairing a rack would consist of replacing Deckard with the failed chip and could be accomplished in less than 10 minutes. Therefore, only 3 or 4 spare racks are needed to ensure essentially continual, error free okay. operation. Speed and cost objection. It is not possible to build an LSI chip tote as the key in one set for $10. Rather, 40 USEC and $100 are needed. Another section discusses the chip design and speed and shows that one USEC is a reasonable estimate of feed time required per key with 1977 technology. These high speeds are possible because of the very small amount of I.O. required. MBS is apparently using speed figures for an MSI TTL implementation which be used as a test bed. This device takes 20 set to load a 64-bit message and 20 set to unload their salted 64-bit cryptogram so that I.O. alone takes 40 USEC in addition. The device takes 13 USEC for computation. The dominancy of I.O. time makes lowering this computation time of little value. The cryptanalytic search machine will not use standard data encryption chip, but rather will utilize a special search chip which is optimized for computation speed at the expense of I.O. speed. This is economical because of the extremely low I.O. volume. Neglecting diagnostic testing, each chip need only be loaded at the beginning of the day with 184 bits, 64 bits of plain text, 64 bits of corresponding ciphertext, and 56 bits to specified starting point in the key space for the chips are. The output is even more limited. Most chips will have no output unless they fail and output an improper solution. These failures are easily detected by checking each supposed solution to see if it really does decipher the known ciphertext into the known plain text. And the one chip which is searching the portion of the key space containing the right key will have one 56-bit output. All other operations, including incrementing key, are done on the chip. The low volume of I.O. allows serial input to be used, reducing the pin count requirement to only 7 activicants. Although a 16 pin package may be required because of the large die size, pin count is a factor in determining an IC's cost, and the cost of such a chip in million quantities would be approximately $10. NBS is $100 per chip figure is reasonable for small quantity purchases with several markups. Physical size objection. A million chip machine would require 6,006 foot high racks. MBS basis is based on the assumption that 20 and 2, 129 centimeters of board area are needed per search chip. They also assume each search chip needs one Intel 8080 or similar microprocessor for interfacing and control. Three, the low pin count allows a density of at least one search chip per in two. 6.5 cm2. 128 search chips can thus mounted on an 11 inches x 13 inches, 28 centimeters x 33 centimeters. Printed circuit board with room left for up to 15 packages of control logic. The low I/O volume allows use of only own interface control unit per board. Time shared among the 128 search chips on a Philinguis A million chip machine thus requires only 64 racks, each with 128 such cards. Power requirements objection. A million chip device operating at high speed will consume too much power. Unless special precautions are taken, LSIICs are limited to about 1 watt of power dissipation. Because of here is a linear trade off in speed and power, the question burns whether 1 watt is sufficient power to allow a 1. Set search time per key as will be shown in a later section. The high speed portion of the chip includes about 3000 gates. To obtain a 1, you set search time. These must operate with approximately a 4 set gate delay. The equivalent number of. Okay, so I think I like the best part of this, the best way to do this is just taking down the objection and then like the one line response because this is beautiful um i really like this so let's call it objections it's kind of have a, they have a title to them which is interesting so it's like like a title and then like Objection. I want to just get that like officially. Or maybe I should just like just do it like that. And then just take down the notes for like that. So this is what their objection is. And it's just saying it's true for parallel processors. However, the architecture revision vision. Okay. Their repetitive structure and the IO volume, lack of really simplified design. I mean, okay, honestly, they're just trying to say that we can add the first part as well, just to be fancy. I mean, I don't really think that matters. Sure, if 
I really want it to be fan. Oh gosh. I really want it to be fancy. Not that it's that needed to be fair. Okay. Because I feel like the title isn't giving me enough information. Um, oh. Maybe we should do this. I don't really know how I want to do it yet. Okay. Meantime, between failures, would be much less than one day. The machine would hardly ever complete an error-free search, and then they just say like it would have good like fault tolerance. Where is it? They're just saying like by cooling the machine. there and they're basically saying that they aren't even an issue so they're saying by cooling the room you could fix this so just in general um, and then it doesn't matter because you're building it in 64 racks and with thousand component Yet each rack can take its own chip failures to a spare rack. So basically, the machine will be built in this, and each will be able to do this. There you go. So attackers could really. Go for it. it. Seems I'm like really tired for some reason. No good reason at all either. Which is worth which is the worst part when you're just tired for no reason. And you just know you gotta keep going. I don't know why this one looks so weird. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> Speed and cost. Objection, it's not possible to build this where it can do one, what, microsecond, nanosecond for $10. Rather it would cost this much and be this expensive. I should use. I am so tired. Um, that's not what I'm looking for. It is also not what I'm looking for. Um, it's probably on this one. Nope. Is it on this one? No, I don't really feel like opening a new page. Let's do it here then. Hmm. I might have to get off in a second. M U, not helpful, but micro units or something. Micro, microns. Man. I gotta, okay, so in one, so it's like this.
million dollars rather and then for some reason he uses an L even though we know it's also going to be And here, the you know what they're trying to say is, okay, I'm just gonna keep yawning at this point. Oh man, oh gosh. Um, one second. Okay, I'm gonna go through this little part because I'm really enjoying it. Oh, there's so many of them. I might not make it. Oh man, I might not make it. My gosh, this is like, I'm not gonna make it. Cool, it's really cool seeing like who these people are in pictures. Never really. And I love how they all did like electrical engineering, like building stuff, computers and stuff first. Yeah, I think I need to come back to this when I don't feel like my brain's gonna explode, which I do feel like right now. And I'm loving this paper so far it's actually really fun um but i am here and it's just not gonna it's not gonna get in here for the rest of the day so that's about it for today got not bad 40 minutes in started the notes uh learning some history um tomorrow morning i should have time to finish this up hopefully um but yeah I guess see y'all for this tomorrow morning uh, to finish off the paper. But uh, toodle all. Um, oh, and if anyone wants to find this paper for themselves, sorry, I will go through that at the end here. So, Ernest, if you get to this point, you're like, wait, how do I find the paper for this? Um, everything now for this series is at uncloak.org. You can go to courses, Rush Cryptography Engineering. You can go to the syllabus and find the week that I'm going through. So currently I'm going through week two in uh, content. So again, you can go to crypto engineering syllabus. You can go to week two, find the exercises. And then from here, you can go to the bottom and find the extra reading. I'm going through copy A, cause I can copy and paste the, the text. If you like copy B better, go for it. But these are the two papers. Oh, this is the paper for the extra reading. And so you can kind of read a bit about it. I like jumping into papers without even reading the intro and just jumping into it, so I, I did. Um, and yeah, if people want to start taking some of these notes and adding them to the Uncloak knowledge graph, um, that's possible as well. It's all on GitHub when you can you know, uh, have a video that's hopefully going to be turned into a highlight real soon by Ernest. Oh, and my mom's calling. <laughs>